Hi, everyone. My name is Chloe, and welcome to another TGI Friend Day. So Krista is the other one that is a victim of my not pushing record. So this is another one that we have done this talk before, so I'm going to make it a little bit different, and it's just going to be a good time. So Krista is somebody that I really enjoy watching. I've enjoyed getting to know her. She is just an inspiration to me, truth, truthfully. I mean, I, I don't like... I don't even know. I'm like boggled with words because I don't know what to say because Krista is a, an inspiration in life. She is a great reader. She's just the best at like balancing all the different things. And uh, she reads everything like some historical, some romance, some, like you read nonfiction. Like I get so many recommendations from Krista and I just love everything about your channel. So um, Krista, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello. That was like quite the introduction. It, it just oh. like, I can't even get words <laughs> out because you, you have been like, I fangirled about before I ever started booktube. And then now like we've done a couple buddy reads and it's, it's just been a joy. So well, thank you. Well, I'm Krista. My <laughs> is Books and Jams. Um, I've been on YouTube for about almost five years in April. It will be my five oh, year really? YouTube anniversary. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah. Read a little bit of everything, like Chloe said. Yep. Probably, I always say historical fiction is my favorite, mm -hmm. um, but I don't always just read historical fiction. So I read a, a little yeah. bit of most things. <laughs> Not everything, yeah. but most things. Yes. So what got you into reading in the first place? Um, I feel like I've always been a reader. My family mm -hmm. are big readers. Uh, my parents were big readers. And I can just remember from a very young age, loving books and riding my little bike to the library and coming yeah. home with this jack, like one-handed yep. like holding this the handlebars our uh, own real life Matilda <laughs> yeah I really I really I can remember I mean Charlotte's Web was the first book that made me cry my mom's yeah. like what's wrong I'm like I'm reading, I'm yeah. reading Charlotte's Web. so I just I feel like I've been a reader for a long time my parents did read alouds with us um always we always had books all over the house like I mean yeah. there's been phases where I didn't read quite as much but mm -hmm. I don't remember what got me into reading because I just always remember being a reader yeah, it's just been a thing so do you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? When I was younger, I always wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. And always. Always loved, like, in sixth grade, we had the option of going to choir or going to a first grade class and letting the little kids read oh, to you. Really? So, of course, I chose letting the kids read to me, even though I love music, too. Yeah. Um, and I just always wanted to be a teacher. And so I went to school to be a teacher. And then my senior year of college, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think I want to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah. <It's> <laughs> It's a political yeah. job. It is a political job. Yeah. I love the actual teaching aspect of it. I don't like parents and pull up the politics of yeah. school yeah. And grades and planning, like all the stuff that surrounds it. I just like yeah. being with kids and being able to teach. Them. Yeah. Which you do. I mean, you're a nanny and yeah. you're a Sunday school teacher. So yeah, I feel like that you found a way to make it work. Yeah. So why did you join booktube? I, um, well, I'll tell you how I found booktube first. Cause it's okay. kind of I was watching those uh, Jane Austen retellings that are like web series, like yeah. Minute Diaries and Emma mm -hmm. Approved. So I was watching those nonstop on YouTube yeah. and a little subscription thing that shows up on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, Ariel Bissett, one uh -huh. of her videos showed up. And so I started watching that and then I just got into this rabbit hole yeah. of what people are on the internet talking about books yes. and I just started watching and watching for probably four or five months and then I'm like you know what I can do this yeah <laughs> I yeah. read enough books and I love talking about books yes I'm just, and there's not very many people at that time mm -hmm. they probably were out there but I didn't see very many people who were a little older who were not just reading YA I mean I read yeah. a lot of YA at the beginning because that's what I was watching Mm -hmm. um, and I still every once in a while will read YA, but I just, I thought I had a voice that wasn't a big part of the community. Yeah. And I feel like it's broadened out so much more now yeah. that it's, you can't say that anymore. But when I yeah. first started four and a half years ago, I was like, one of the only, yeah. yeah. So I didn't, my channel did not take off. I was like a really steady, slow, yeah. Like, yeah. slow burn with growth. But, um, but yeah, I just thought I had a voice that wasn't represented. Yeah. At the time, so. Do you feel like your reading has changed or shifted or anything because of booktube? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's so much fun to go into a bookstore. I'm like, oh, I know that book. Oh, I know that yes. book. Oh, I know that book. So there's very little 
of me now picking up a book that I don't know anything about. Yeah. Every once in a while, I come across something that I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this, or not very many people are talking about this. But in general, I know I'm excited to read all the books that I pick up because I've heard yeah. other people talking about them. And that's very different from when I started. Um, and also right before I started, I went through a phase of just reading Christian fiction uh -huh. for probably two, two and a half years. Like that's all I read. Oh, really? Um, but then when I first started, I was, I went into this whole YA fantasy phase. Oh, which, really? Well, like, because that's what you that's see. That's what everybody was yeah. reading and talking about on booktube. Yeah. Um, so then, I mean, I've kind of come back to, I mean, I've always loved historical fiction, but mm -hmm that's kind of like looped back around to what I love. I just am much more familiar with the books that I pick up now. Yeah. Than I, used to be. I know. I'm like, how did I, I don't, I don't know how I like figured out which books to pick up before book yeah. two. Yeah. Cause it's like, I don't read like the New York times bestseller. So yeah. I guess I would just go like browse the library. I don't that's even know. Exactly. A lot more like random walks through the library and yep. reading the backs and, Oh, this yep. sounds interesting. Yeah. Can't, I can't really do that now. My library is curbside only. So I yeah. have to pick up books I hear about from somewhere yes, else. Yes, I know. Do you, do you feel like you buy more books because of BookTube? No, I am a thrift buyer. Like mm -hmm. I almost never pay full price for a book. Yes. Uh, so yes, I buy more books, but it's always from library book sales and yep. book outlet and thrift stores. Yep. And so there's still books that I'm hearing about. Yeah. But almost, almost a hundred percent of what I buy is backlist. Yeah. I don't ever, except for my book of the month subscription, yeah. that's the only thing where I get new releases. Um, so mm -hmm. my, yes, I still, I mean, I have, I own way, way, way more books than I ever yeah. did before booktube, but it's all backlist and they're all like $3 or less. <laughs> nice. <the> yes. <laughs> Which is a great thing, but it's yeah. also so overwhelming. Like. Yeah. It, yeah. Because yeah, I've got all these books over here that I'm like, they were so <laughs> cheap and they sound interesting and then they yeah. sit there. So they do. Yeah. So <laughs> how did you get into historical fiction? Like, are you a big history buff or it, what is it about historical fiction that really draws you in? I think it's fun to personalize or empathize with people who lived through this event in history that you mm -hmm. may have learned about in class or in a college class or whatever, or just know about. Mm -hmm. And then to have that personal touch or personal mm -hmm. spin on that event is so cool to me. I'm, uh, yeah. I am someone, I'm not like a highly sensitive person, but Enneagram nine, like I just love to get yeah. into people's stories and like yes. hear how they think and how they respond. And, and so I, I love that personal touch yeah. in, in a historical fiction. So they may, some things might be changed or adapted, sure. still fiction, but you get to see this historical event through mm -hmm. the eyes of a, a potential real life person who right. has to go through it. Yeah. And I just think that, that that is so cool. I love the empathy that that brings in me and compassion. Yes. And I love the Google searches afterwards where yes. I'm like, did it really yes. happen? What part about this is true? Yes. What part is true? I know. If it's done well, that leads me down a rabbit hole so far. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Do you like um, any historical romances? Uh, not, well, I shouldn't say that I don't like them. I haven't read very many of them. Yeah. So it's not so, a, it's not a genre I've read a lot from. I so don't, I don't know, know if, I don't know if we've talked about it, but I've had like an existential crisis lately because I have always said, I don't like historical, like I'm just not a fan of it. But I think what it is, is I'm not a fan of historical romance. Yeah. Like I am a fan because I've read a, quite a few World War II things and like I keep picking up these historicals that are historical fiction and yeah. I think yeah like I think what you said like it's it, when you can get that emotional response it's a, a better book and when yeah. you do it around such a like highly emotional stressful situation yeah it's like right there you don't have to build it right Sorry well and there. I think the difference with historical romance is that a historical romance is set in a time period but focused on the romance Whereas a historical fiction is like more about the events and the history mm -hmm. per se than, than just these characters' lives or these right. people's lives. So, so there's a little bit of a difference in focus. So yeah, I'm, not a point. Huge, I'm not a huge romance reader. Right. I like, I like theme, like in contemporary romances, I like the mm -hmm. themes that it can bring up and the, the situations and the stories that people have to walk through, not as much yes. the romance part of it. Yes. Like I like a good romance, but I don't care to be in the bedroom with them while no. they're, so no. like, 
I, yes. I think that's a difference with historical romances. So like, that's just focused on that's true. A that's romance, a but set during a certain time. So you're not Very really learning point. that much about this time period. You're yeah. just focused on these two people. Yes. So there's a difference there. So yeah, I don't think that's a, I mean, I'm not opposed to reading historical romance. I just right. don't, I don't. Don't care. gravitate toward it. So what is your favorite, is, do you have a favorite time period or a favorite um, like kind of trope within historical fiction? Do you have any of that? Sure. Kind of stuff? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> I love, I am not, I know that right now there's a trend for people to not love World War II historical romance. I know. There's just so many of them. There's so much. Yeah. And I love them all. <laughs> I do too. But I do love when an author can highlight a little piece of it that, that may not be the most popular parts of yes. the war to talk about or like, yes. I don't know. I think of um, White Chrysanthemum. I forget the author, but she talks about two Korean sisters. One of them is, mm. um, it's set during World War II and one of them is kidnapped by the Japanese army. So it takes place in Japan and Korea and it's about women divers in Korea. Like I just learned about this whole other yeah. side of things that was, and it was done so well and so heartbreaking. Mary Lynn Brocht is the author. Okay. Like Chrysanthemum. But I love stories like that where it's World War II, but it's not set at a yes. concentration camp or- right. Right. Um, in the Warsaw ghetto, like the ghetto in Warsaw, like it's, it's, it's a little known side of things that yes. it was just so interesting to learn about, but also like still so horrifying because it's yeah. time stuff. But right. I, so I think that's a trope that I, I don't know if you call that a trope, but it doesn't have to be World War II, but I love it when a historical fiction teaches me about mm -hmm. maybe a lesser known fact in history or something that I had forgotten or an area or a person that that I just never knew about before. Yeah. So I love that. Well, and like, I feel like I have heard that Ruta Sepetis does that really well. I have she not does. read any of hers, but like oh, that, she does. Yeah, that I really want to read. Like, I just want to read anything by yeah. her because I've heard she does that really well. Are there any she other really authors you know of that do that pretty well? Oh, like, God. Consistently? I feel like a lot of authors, um, I don't know that any other jump out off the top of yeah. my head. Oh, that's but. fine. I'm, I'm asking for See, Brutus and is the one I would have said. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> have you read Lilac Girls by Martha, Martha Hall Kelly? Yeah. I re have you read the sequel, no. I guess? No, no, but I want to. And she has another one coming out in March. That's I know. In that same, like it's, I guess it would be like prequel, pre like it's one of the characters from Lilac Girls is great grandmother or something. So it's. Okay. So the is the part. second one a prequel? I think so, but maybe okay. like closer to time, closer to the line. Okay, because I have heard less great things about the second one, and so I haven't read okay. it. Um, yeah, I haven't read it, and I was wondering, like, how do you have a sequel after the way some of that wrapped up? You know, yeah. I don't know. So I think they're not. I think you can read them without having read Lilac Girls because it's a whole different generation. Okay, beforehand, so. Yeah. I don't think it would matter. I don't know. Yeah. For yet. anyone who has not read Lilac Girls, the reason I ask that is because it is told from three different women's perspectives, all with, they have more um, well-known or like traditional roles in the war, but it, I liked seeing all of their different perspectives and how it all worked together. I really liked that book. Um, I realized when I just did recently a, an anticipated reads mm -hmm. video that yeah. a trope that I guess that I like is yeah. a story about three strong women. Yes. In period. So I think yes. three or four of my books that I talked about, mm -hmm. that was the, <laughs> that was the main idea. Like there was, the, we follow these three women and their lives somehow enter, end up yes. intersecting by the end. Yes. I, I, love that. <laughs> I love that too. Like I love multiple perspective books and yeah. especially when they're women focused, like, yeah, I love that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorites. Are yeah. there any other tropes that you can think of that inside or outside of historical fiction that you really like? Yeah, for sure. If the word orphan mm -hmm. <laughs> is in the title or the description is about an orphan in any way, yeah. like I just want to read that book. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's something that's close to my heart. My family has adopted kids mm -hmm. and, and I have always thought that that would be part of my future. Who knows if that's still the case yeah. or not, but I am just, um, I have a big heart for for orphans in general and so I yeah. just love hearing stories about 
about orphans. Or I was actually thinking about you the other day because he, Chris is the reason I'm on the face, Facebook book swap groups and stuff. And they're so addicting. They're so addicting every month. Like that's really where I put my, my in and outs. I put all of the like books that are in really good condition on there. And I just like tried to swap with this girl for the orphan train and the orphan tail. Um, both sounded really good, but she denied me. So (laughs) (laughs) So next time. Um, so who are some of your favorite authors? I have so many. (laughs) Yeah. That question is so hard. It is. Well, it's not hard. I kind of, so these shelves here are like little square shelves and I put some of my favorite authors all in these. Oh, so really? Kristen Hannah, I can look right here. Kristen yep. Hannah, uh, Frederick Bachman, uh, Louise, Louise Penny's mystery mm-hmm. series I love. Um, and I have, oh, Diane Chamberlain is a new one. Susanna yes. Kersley, oh. I love. Susan Meisner. I have yes. so many favorite authors. <laughs> so another reason I love your channel is because like three of those that you said, I would say are my favorites. And then like two of those that you said I'm are on my, like, I'll never read them again list. So because, funny. Yeah. Because like Frederick Bachman, I just cannot get into his stuff and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause I know you're not alone. Like, yeah, so he, he's very I, divisive. I feel like part of me wonders if it's translation because they are translated books. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it is a different writing style. I yeah. absolutely love it. And, well, but, but I have discovered, I love it better when I'm buddy reading it with somebody mm-hmm. and can talk about things than when I, cause I read anxious people on my own, his newest. And I was like, eh. yeah, but I loved some of his other ones, like favorites of all time. Do you know, I'm just curious, does he have a consistent translator that translates all of his books? don't know and you know I should look that up because I feel like we should talk about the translators when we're reading well and that's where I think that's where part of my problem comes with translated fiction is just because like people will quote those books and um you know pull out quotes that really are impactful to them and stuff and they talk about the language and that kind of stuff which yes Frederick Bachman wrote it but like somebody chose the words to translate that so um yeah but I mean I have no idea who any of the translators are Question, have you read Bianca Murray? Hum, if you don't know the words. No, no, if you want to I want to. Because I feel like her writing style is similar to Bachman, but I'm curious if you would like her. I yeah, don't know. it's, I, I'm Bachman interested. Set in South Africa, like so good. I love, love, yeah. love hers as well. Well, and I feel like the difference in like the authors that you just mentioned is I have a really hard time with like really slow paced, yeah. um, books. And I feel like, like, like bear town, it took like half the book to like get into that. And I understand why, because he was setting the scene and setting the town and all of that kind of stuff. But like, I'm like, come on, you know, and Susanna Kearsley is kind of the same that she's just very slow. And, um, so I think that's like what yeah. pulls me out too. I don't remember Beartown being slow because I was so into it. Like, yeah. I'm so in it. I do recognize that in Susanna Kearsley. Like hers are not page turners. Like I'm always very yeah. invested, but I'm not like flying through them. Yeah. Like yeah. Diane Chamberlain, I feel like I could read in a weekend because I yes. just can't, like they just yes. page turn, just going, They're going, going. Really good. But, so good. Yeah. But yeah. I still love Susanna Kearsley. Like I still love her books so much. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. And hers are chunkers. Diane's are kind of chunkers too, but they, they go quick. Yeah. You go quick. So you are one of the hosts of middle grade March. How did you get into middle grade? I, I love middle grade books. I feel like I've gotten into it much more since I started hosting with Katie Yeah. for middle grade March, but I feel like I always, I think, cause I have always worked with kids. Yeah. Almost always in some capacity or other have been around kids. And so I always kind of have my eye on what are they reading? What are they liking? um, And reading some of them um, and some of my favorites of all time, like the Chronicles of Narnia, I've read over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, I've read times. Um, Anne of Green Gables, especially the first book I've read over and over. And those are all middle grade books. And they're, they're my, they're, they're on my, like, never going to stop loving these books list. Right. Yep. Um, But I just, I feel like the difference between middle grade and YA for me, middle grade always, it can still deal with heavy issues and mm-hmm. historical events and different things, 
but it's always going to have this level of hopefulness Mm -hmm. and restoration and it's always going to kind of end with like everything's going to be okay a big focus on family and not so much the individual family or friendships or found family Mm -hmm. and not so much just like individuals which I feel like YA is a lot of coming to know coming of age and all of that and like self-focus where middle grade is like community or like your circle focused and it always just has this level of positivity even if it is going to deal with really hard things yes and sometimes I just need that. Yes. <laughs> sometimes I just need that positivity in my life. Yes. Um, but I, and I and I love when I can find middle grade authors who don't write down to kids. Yeah. Who don't? I mean, they're often more simply written, and that's I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But I like when there's deep themes or like mm-hmm. different layers of the things to look at and think about, um, so that older kids can and, and adults can enjoy them just as yeah. much. Yeah. as kids enjoy them. Uh, yeah, I just, I think that it has so much to offer yeah. every age, not just the kids that it's intended. targeted towards. Yeah. 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 Um, that was very profound. <laughs> and <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, I love everything that you just said and I agree. And you know that there's probably not going to be like a romantic relationship, which right. for YA is so much like the angst yeah. and the romance oh, is, yeah it's got its place. Like I, I read some YA, um, it's got its place, but it's not, I mean that, yeah, that's a, that's a big, big difference. Um, I just hauled three willows, which is book four and a half in the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Did you think that was a thing? No, it's book four. I didn't either. And it's book four and a half. And yet it's like 350 pages. And so I'm like, wait, why are we a half here? Um, novella, that's like, like a- right. Like I need credit for a full book. So I'm going to read this, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm assuming it's not following the same characters or I don't know, mm-hmm. but I've binged that series recently. It's and, a- yeah. It's, it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think I had read the first one and then I really liked the movie. And so within the past year or two, I've binged the first four or whatever it is, but yeah, it is fun. Um, so let's see how I want to know, how do you pick a TBR? Because you don't really do monthly TBRs, do you? No, I love monthly. You do? Yeah. Okay. And I, how do you pick them? I see people turning away from TBRs. I'm like, I need my TBR. Um, tell, tell me all about that because so, I, my TV I, philosophy is up in the air. Yeah. I love making a monthly TBR. If you, mm-hmm. I mean, I have this room. I'm just going to like. Just pan know. the room. I love <laughs> it. So there's so many. And that's only one wall of books. Like, oh, yeah. no, I'm going to be off. But I have a middle grade shelf like over here. And I have a Christian fiction shelf over there. Mm-hmm. So I have this room, which is my TBR room, really. There's some books in yeah. here that I've read. But for the most part, they're all on red and this is where I work out as well so well okay I'm, I'm like oh that yeah <laughs> okay um, so I I I start pretty early pulling off books for the next month um and kind of starting a pile of what just is calling out to me really I also have uh some goals for the year like this year I want to read 10 of my book of the month books I sure. want to read I yeah. want to keep working on series and I put all of my next book in series that I own out in the other room where mm-hmm. I often sit as well. So it's in front of okay. my face more often yep. and we'll um, kind of see, oh, I want to work on that series so that okay. that's something I'm constantly working on. And then for the last two, three years, this year and the last two years, mm-hmm. I've asked subscribers to give me recommendations. Yes. And so yes. you're actually resting on my recommendations. Oh, part. okay, you know, my cool. Computer's resting on it yep. and it's jam pack full and this is my third year and I have three more subscribers so I also have a pile of middle grade a pile of Christian fiction and a pile of like more than five people recommended it so I have like all of these piles that if I'm not sure of what I want to read like I'll kind of look here and Mm -hmm. pull off some from there every month so I'm making I just have these little things that I'm like in the back of my mind my goals that I'm working towards but also I just want to have a variety so that no matter what mood, because I also feel like a mood reader. Yes. I'm going to read what I'm in the mood to read. So I try to make sure that my TBR each month is, is pretty big, but also mm-hmm. has a variety of different types of books on it. Right. I'm not going to pick all historical fiction or all middle grade or all, mm-hmm. like I, I kind of want a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so that throughout the month, if I'm feeling like a fantasy, oh, I've got that on my TBR. Yeah. Let, me, let me just do that one first. Yeah. So 
working towards goals, have a variety. And I try to make it, I mean, I make it, usually my TBR is about eight to 10 books uh-huh. and I read probably 12 to 14 books a month. So like okay. there's always a little wiggle room outside. To pick up other stuff. Too. Yeah. And I hold my TBR very loosely. Yeah. So if in the That's middle good. of the month, none of them sound good to me anymore, yeah. I'll totally go get something else. And I have no shame. Okay. No, like regrets, like that's fine. Like this is okay. what's calling me at the beginning of the month, but come the 15th, I might want something totally different or my book of the month might come in and I want to read it right now or okay. I have these six library holds. <laughs> yeah. So like mm-hmm. I, I choose a TBR, but I also hold it very loosely. Like it's okay if I don't end up reading all of these or any of these, so yeah, that make, that's interesting that you do less than you actually read. Like, because I feel like for me, like I don't, I would traditionally say I'm not a TBR. Like I, it stresses me out to pick a TBR. Then it feels like an obligation. Yeah. And, but I've thought about it and I'm like, maybe I can make it work if I pick like 30 books, like something that <laughs> I'm not going to read, you know, and then pick from that. But then I'm like, well, then what's the point? I'm just destroying my shelves for. But I feel like I also, so like this, this stack here is one of my goals for 2021 is to read from these five authors. And these are all the books oh. I from five different authors. So I feel like this is also my TBR. And then I have like my book of the month stack yep. right there. Right. So like, that's also always my TBR. So like, yep. yeah, that's always books right behind me is my Christmas exchange from last year. Yes. So those are always part of my TBR as well. And my TBR, so have, part, okay. I mean, I have these areas that, but if I stand in this room and like, what do I want to read next? I'm it's overwhelmed. A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. just so many choices. So narrowing that down is like a first glance, like this is where I'm going to look first when I'm ready for a new book. Right. That makes sense. That's helpful. And yeah. like I recently, I, I split my shelves. And so I have one bookcase that is all books that I have to read with my eyes. Like I cannot get them digitally yeah. any sort of way. And yeah. then one that I um, can get audio or ebook. And right. I, I have really enjoyed that because that is helpful to just like yeah. narrowing it down a little bit, but that makes sense. And everybody, I think, I mean, I would be shocked if there were subscribers that are subscribed to me that aren't subscribed to you, but that is another reason I love your channel because you are very good at involving your subscribers and having like having that cart. I love, or yeah, it's cart. Right. And I love that idea. And you also tonight, I mean, we're, we're pre-filming this, but tonight she's doing productivity and just hang out sprint. Yep. I mean, whatever. And I love that. I love it too. Well, I feel like that's why I started the channel is to make connections. Hundred percent. Yeah. So if I'm just talking away into the void and not like having that connection, it's kind of yeah. pointless. And I don't think yeah. I would still be here four and a half years later. But yeah. I've made legit friends. I know. <laughs> even among just subscribers and yeah. commenters that I they comment consistently on every single video, and I'm like, yes. I'm so honored and yes. <laughs> and blown away that people are taking time out of their day. But it's because now we feel like friends. Like, I feel like yes. I'm friends with these. I'm making yes. trips. I'm making plans with Debbie who will probably end up watching this. Yeah. I've never met her. She lives in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to go to Prince Edward Island someday. It's going to happen. There you go. And I've okay. never met her in real life, but we yeah. talk about it all the time. <laughs> yes. If she doesn't have a channel. She's just a subscriber who is wonderful and has been around for so yeah. long. That connection is the reason why I'm still yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't feel super smart and I don't have the most yeah. critical eye when I'm reading I read just yeah. for enjoyment so like my yeah. voice is not because you're not watching me because of my in-depth analysis of right. books that I read right I it's a hundred percent about the people for me and I love reading and I'm sharing this hobby with my friends so yep, yep. <laughs> if yep. I don't have that it's kind of pointless <laughs> so I I agree and you're good like we have buddy we're currently in the middle of a buddy read and like that is another thing that I love from booktube is like 100%. finding those buddy reads and, and making those connections. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. Um, so you read so many random, every kind of thing. Is there anything you feel like is missing in the like publishing world? Anything you wish there was more of? Do I wish there's more of, uh, no, nothing yeah. that I can think of. I mean, I feel like I read a little bit of everything, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Well, there you well, go. you know what? Okay. <laughs> Here's something I'll say. I, I love reading from, and this is probably something I just need to do more work on. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I read from authors of color and mm -hmm. indigenous authors in particular. I would like to see more books by native to any place like indigenous yeah. authors, um, but also books by books written by people of color and indigenous authors that are not just about racism or the struggles, the struggle, but like just stories. Yes. So I love yep. like folklore, like about I, I, Grace Lin is a middle grade author. I think of that, that writes based on Chinese folklore. And I just love okay. her book because it's just so interesting. And, and, um, but I wish there were more even contemporary that weren't always, I, and there probably are, this is just on me. Like yeah. I probably need to go do better research to find yeah. them. So if you guys have recommendations, please yes. come and tell me. Yes. Um, but yeah, books by author of color that are, that are delightful Life. and yeah. life and yep. yeah yeah and that's, it's like I said it's probably out there I just need to do my homework better to find them but yeah so I want to know um how do you track your reading <laughs> <laughs> um or I do you been, I do for sure yeah. yeah Goodreads is my number one mm -hmm. I love Goodreads and I've made it work for me I don't do all the fancy shelves I do a year like yeah so I, like a two I started in 2014 or 13 um, and so that's about, about one of the only shelves I have, okay. but I have exclusive shelves. So they give you the three, like yeah. want to read, read, and currently reading. Right. I have added a owned TBR fiction, owned TBR nonfiction, owned TBR Kindle, DNF, and save for later. So I have, okay. so all of my books are on one of those eight shelves. Okay. Um, so I can DNF a book and not put it on my red shelf because I have a, right. I have a, Exclusive. Exclusive shelf yeah. for Dina. Um, so I've made Goodreads work for me, and that is my that's my most consistent. Okay. In this past year, I became a Patreon of the Currently Reading podcast. Okay. And one of their perks is this spreadsheet that they mm -hmm. give you. And I used it this past year. Um and I kept I, I kept up with it. I did oh, it. Good. It's be, yeah. It's fun because I haven't filmed this one yet, but my, like my 2020 reading and review kind of thing, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have charts that I can show yes. in my videos because the the spreadsheet the the person who created it like made all of those charts yes. and then automatically fills them and I didn't have to do, I just like input yep. all the information mm -hmm. and it does all the fancy stuff yep. so I love that and I used yep. it this past year I, I probably will still use that again yeah um and then I have random bullet journal like I'm not a consistent yeah. bullet journaler bullet journaler but yeah. I do have um I do have some random pages to track like the series that I'm in the middle of and mm -hmm. um, just a few of my other year long goals. I make yeah. pages for that, but I don't use it on a monthly, like yeah. I don't put everything in there on a monthly basis. So Goodreads is my go-to. And then this past year I used that spreadsheet, which was yeah. fun. Too, so. Well, so we're like nine days into the year as we film this and I'm using the spreadsheet for the first time ever and I'm loving it, but yeah. I'm feeling very called out because I'm realizing what I'm reading a lot more, like I'm much more aware of my reading and I really like that. Well, and the thing I like about the spreadsheet, even though like it's all given to me, I mm -hmm. hide columns that I don't need to track. Like sure. it's, there's things about like, where did you purchase this book? I don't yep. know. Like all yeah. my yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I hide columns that I don't feel the need to track. Sure. Yeah. So I'm just tracking the things that I want. Yes. Um, and, and that's, that's that that works I make it, I make it work for me yep. just like I make Goodreads work for me I make the spreadsheet work for me too so. yep yep um so what were some of your best books of 2020 oh golly so yeah. many yes <laughs> um I this video when is this one going coming up um not until the end like three weeks from now okay so, the so end of my favorites of 2020 has already come out at this okay. point okay Nobody who, I bet and I brought it in here. Nobody who watches my channel at all will be surprised that my favorite, favorite, favorite book of 2020 was The Sun to Shine by Anthony mm -hmm. Rainington. Such, such a fantastic nonfiction about a man who was wrongfully convicted and spent 30 years on death row. Did, did that have an Oprah's Book Club stamp on it? Um, yeah, this one does. Yeah. I, I like Oprah and Reese both. I'm like, they, they're not consistent for me. Sometimes they do me dirty. 
Like nope. Oprah, Oprah more so than Reese, I think. But this one will not do you dirty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I I, I found it challenging, inspiring, infuriating, yeah. like hope filled. He just is a, a remarkable man, and yeah. his memoir is just it's just amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, some other favorites. I well, I found Diane Chamberlain this year, mm-hmm. and I read two of her books, and um, they were Dream Daughter, The Dream mm-hmm. Daughter, and Necessary Lies, and I loved both of them. Yep so so much yep. um I'm trying to think of non-middle grade ones I'll talk about them okay in a yeah. second. um I loved Susan Meisner I read two of hers were in my favorites mm-hmm. this year as well um a no- another non-fiction was Being Mortal by Atul Gawande mm-hmm. just talking about aging and and um death but more about aging in America and the the process of it but also like the care that we give to our elderly or the lack thereof mm-hmm. um, and how we focus strictly on health and not um, quality of life. Uh, Which sometimes. is so valid in 2020. Like, yeah. like all of these, you know, the quarantines and things that are done yeah. to protect the health so, of them. But like, for sure. like my grandmother has been quarantined to her room since before Thanksgiving. She's in a nursing home. She has not been allowed to leave her room since before Thanksgiving. And how do you not feel like a caged animal? It's unbelievable. Like, it's and unbelievable. When, when your days, I mean, all of our days are, are numbered, but um, when you're, you're really in that final stage of life, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we can, yeah. that's a different discussion. That book, no, no, that book though, I mean, makes you think about all that stuff. Yeah. It makes you um, understand or think about what kind of questions to ask as you have parents or loved ones who are entering that stage of life, yeah. like what matters to them. And it just was so well done. Yeah. <laughs> Um, some middle grade favorites for sure. Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker. Yes. Uh, it it deals with sexual abuse of minors and foster care and attempted suicide. Like it deals with some deeply Stuff. serious. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's not a book I would just hand to a middle grader yeah. by any means. Yeah. But I think it's topics that need to be discussed, even with kids at that age. Mm-hmm. Um, it deals with friendship and bullying and oh so many different things and it's so 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 well done but it's a handle with care book I would definitely say Mm -hmm. like adults read it first and then read it with the middle graders in your life maybe like yes you know Uh, do you watch do you watch I Livy for books sometimes Um, yeah she just did a video well I don't know when she did it I just watched it but it, it was about why adults should read children children's literature I I think she was more focused on even younger but like um yeah, I think the teaching tools are exceptional and books like that, like, yeah, yeah, could be put into the right hands with the right guidance could be very, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do you definitely. have any other middle grade favorites? Oh, goodness. Um, yeah. Two series that I fell in love with this year, uh, The Vanderbeekers and The Penderwicks. And these are totally on the sweeter end of okay. middle grade, um, just the focus on family. They both are a, a larger, large sibling group, and we kind of follow different kids from the from each book. But they also the Vanderbeekers more so than Penderwicks. I mean, they both kind of deal with some serious stuff as well, but on a lighter. They have a much lighter touch. Although this most recent Vanderbeekers book, I think it's called Lost and Found. I was I was sobbing from like chapter two. Really, <laughs> yeah. really? I had me crying all the time. That's <laughs> funny. Like, yeah that's funny what about least favorites do you have any of those yeah <laughs> yeah I, I participated in the book two prize for the first two rounds oh. in 2020 and then I stopped because I was not enjoying yep. really any of the books that I was reading yeah. and I was dreading having to pick up the next one yeah. so anything that's like closer to that literary fiction mm-hmm. I like some literary fiction but I like to be in charge of which literary fiction I have to pick up yeah so I was, I was given this set of six books, each of the two rounds, and I had to read them within this mm-hmm. two month period. And I, it was, it was really, really difficult. Yeah. So, um, yeah, literary fiction. I wonder some other least favorites. I really didn't enjoy Hillbilly Elegy. That was kind of a bummer. I was hoping to like that more than I did. It was, I just found it super boring. <laughs> um, one of the Christmas books I read, Comfort and Joy, is by Kristen Hanna. Oh, and you didn't her. like it no <laughs> I, it's been I read it when it first came out like the first okay. time and yeah. so now with the resurgence or whatever I like looked at my re- rating and I feel like I gave it like a three or you know I mean like I liked it okay but I've heard a lot of people not like it so no. it's on my shelf and I 
I don't know if I'll ever reread it. You can unhaul that one. Yeah. That can be a, put that in the yeah. out. Pod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so what are you currently reading? I'm uh, so I looked this morning to see Chloe. I'm in the middle of six books right now. <laughs> How do you and do that? Four of them are nonfiction. What How do you do? How do you do that? Because I time or read. So I, I read okay. in like when you do sprints in a live with someone like yeah. that's how I read all the time. So I like read for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and then I get up and do something else. Yeah. And then I sit and read or I, or I switch gears and read some or like do something on my computer. Right. So yeah, I have, um, I have two books I'm reading with my patrons, This Tender okay. Land and The Sound of Gravel, which is a nonfiction memoir. Okay. By Ruth Werner. I'm reading Everybody Always With You. Mm-hmm. We're almost done. We'll finish it this yes. weekend, hopefully. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm, I, I have an audio book of The House on Foster Hill, which is a Christian thriller. Oh, okay. Like mystery, more mystery. I guess there's a couple parts that have been like thrillery, but more mystery. Yeah. And The Lazy Genius, which is like a productivity nonfiction. Okay. Those chapters are super short and I'm reading them every once in a while. So I'm not yeah. like making Actively, progress yeah. on that. And then I have another nonfiction that ca- that I carried over from the fall, Bread and Wine by Shauna Nyquist. I just want to the dust jacket. Yeah. Um, which is, I started it kind of around the holiday season. It's about hospitality. Bread and wine. People at your table <laughs> and okay. community. And, and it's really good. And the recipes, actually, some of the recipes, yeah. I'm like, I need to make this. Yes. But it's, uh, I'll probably, I'm trying to finish that one this weekend too. So I'm hoping yeah. by the end of this weekend to be down. That's to so look. many. I'm like stressed out for you. That is it's a lot. <laughs> but when, when they are nonfiction, that's one thing I can like mix, right. mix and match as nonfiction. But yeah. yeah. I honestly, I haven't picked up this Tenderland all week because I've been trying to make progress on the other one. So yeah. I see I'm currently reading it, but I haven't touched it in five yeah. days. So. Yeah. 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 One's an audio. So that's like when yes. I'm in the car or doing other things. Yes. Well, then, okay. So let's get into the rapid fire. This or that. Okay. I actually want, they're probably not going to be that rapid fire, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, ebook, audiobook, paperback or hardback. My go-to is paperback. Okay. But I'm not opposed to reading hardcovers. And I also always have an audiobook going. Yeah. And I have a goal this year of reading more ebooks because I need to up my percentage on NetGalley. <laughs> oh, yeah. NetGalley is a doozy. Do you get on there a lot, NetGalley? No. I, 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 I go in spurts where I get yeah. on and request some things, but then I look at my percentage. I'm like, stop it, Krista, get on. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I look at my shelves and I'm like, no, we do not need this. We do not need this. And my you- goal for the year is to really up my percentage. And then yeah. I am hopefully this year paying more attention to new releases, which might be another rep fire. I'll wait to yeah. it. But- and that galley might be a way that I request some of those newer releases. Okay. So we'll see. Do you have but a Kindle or do you like read on your phone? I have a Kindle, but I typically use my phone. Really? Yeah. Oh, I just, I hate reading on my phone, but it's because I'm too, I get too distracted way too easy. Yeah. I just discovered, um, do you know, you can do infinite scroll yeah. and make it like a web page. Uh, that has helped me a lot re- reading on my phone. Yeah, I don't like flipping the, the page. Yes. Because then I'm like, I have flipped this dang thing. Like, 17,000 <laughs> times. Why am I not done with this? So yeah, I really like that. Okay. Buy or borrow? Um, buy thrift. Like okay. Cheap. Yeah. Somebody, but I also always have library books. So I'm a huge yeah. fan of the library. So both. Yeah. yeah. Somebody needs to start a book of the month for paperbacks that are like mm-hmm. cheaper. You know, I mean, not that it, it, it's still very good price for what it is, but like I would be all about a paperback version of book of the month so yeah. because I know so many big people are watching this let's somebody start this it can happen <laughs> right right uh quiet or background noise quiet indoor or outdoor indoor for reading okay outdoor for going for walks and stuff. yes yes and you were you uh were listening to audiobooks while you walk don't you yeah, yeah definitely. um the one I was thinking of was when you were doing into the woods or whatever walk in the woods a walk in the woods yeah while you're walking in the woods um meet your favorite author meet your favorite character 100 percent author I love getting to hear authors yeah I love hearing their process their idea like I just love hearing authors speak yeah even if I've never read their book before I just find it so interesting 
It, yeah. Have you ever tried to write? No. Do you have any interest? No. Yeah, me either. No. I ended up being an English major. So after I changed my senior oh, really? year from L ed, English was the English had been my concentration. So it was the only okay. thing I could do and finish in yeah. May. Um, so I just wanted to be done at that point because I didn't yep. like the whole world was like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Um, but I was the senior English major bringing all of my papers to the writing lab. Like, please. Yeah. Help me yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think that's why it's interesting to talk to authors for me because it's like, it is, I would have no idea where to start or how to even. Well, and like, every author has their own process yes. and their own way of doing things. And I just, I feel like it gives me so much more of an appreciation for their work. Uh, their yeah. books and even if it's not a book that I loved like yeah. I might have a better feeling towards it because yeah. just hearing how much work went into it and yeah. how they worked on I don't know I just I just think that it's so interesting to hear from authors well I I'm like I don't know if you saw our chat with Susan Wiggs she still writes her books longhand wow oh my gosh the amount of time that yeah. that takes like yeah. and, you know I mean she's got to be very intentional about yeah every word and that is crazy to me sure i heard um jasmine ward who wrote sing unburied sing which are yeah. kind of a literary fiction side of things yeah. she came to my library here before oh really winter yeah. and she this she would write her first draft read through it and and write down all the different things that she wants to work on or change and mm -hmm. then each she would take one at a time and read through the whole thing and fix that and then the next one read through the whole thing and fix that the next wow. one so she did like 18 or 20 edits on one like wow times all the way yes. through for the cover I'm like that's amazing before she ever sent it to an editor like wow. she did all that on her own before I'm like it's just so much work that is her, so books, I mean, her so writing much. is stellar like yeah. it's like poetry which I don't love poetry but her her writing is just sentence by sentence phenomenal yeah yeah well it would be and that's where it's like books are, like writers authors um they don't get paid enough you know yeah, yeah they I know. Don't get paid enough that is so much time but yeah. anyway um book to film or book to tv show uh yes I love all the adaptations <laughs> okay do you watch a lot of them yeah. yeah. I get so excited when I read a book and someone's like, oh, there's a movie of that, or there's yeah. a mini series of that, or yes. The, I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love to watch. And I'm not a stickler for watching or reading first. Like, I prefer oh, to read really? first. But like, I just watched the whole Bridgerton series on Netflix. And now I want to go read all the books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Have you, like, do you have any favorites? What are the best done adaptations you can think of? Oh, oh golly. There's so many good ones. I, I mean, I love the 1980s. Anne of Green Gables with Megan, mm -hmm. Megan Follows. I just love that so much. Um, I love the Harry Potter adaptations. I know people can yeah. get nitty gritty about whether they're good or not, but I just think they're fun. Um, I prefer the Lord of the Rings to the books. <laughs> yeah. I like the movies much better. Um, there's a couple, I don't know. Yeah. I watch a lot of adaptations. Yeah. Cool. I always want to, like, I have big goals about that, but I just never yeah. do. I never do especially for classics I feel like it's fun to to watch the movie first before reading it sometimes because then mm -hmm. you kind of have an idea of what's going on and yes. sometimes the language might be difficult in the yeah. book you yeah. have an idea because of the movie and it helps yeah. well and that's what I thought about the Bridgertons is because I'm not into historical romance that maybe yeah. I would like to watch it and then then read it but yeah. I don't know um classics or new releases um backlist yeah <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I I read some classics, not loads. Yeah, yeah. but I I love backlist. Um, I like new releases too, but I'm not. I'm often not up to date on mm -hmm. what's newest. I guess if I paid more attention on Instagram, everybody yeah. is reading all the new releases. Yes. Um, yeah. but I'm I'm gonna try this year to have at least a handful of new releases. Okay. That are there, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no new books or no rereading no rereading okay no uh, series or standalones standalones what do you feel like is a good length for a series Ooh. I I mean I read some series that have quite a few but mm -hmm. I prefer like a trilogy yeah yeah I think that's my favorite if it can be a trilogy we knock it out that's okay. great yeah but I'm in the middle of quite a few series that have more than that but. yeah 
Yeah. I feel like at some point it just becomes too much and it becomes overwhelming to even start. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you, you have less motivation to pick it up in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, solo or book club? Okay. Solo. Okay. I like reading and talking about books, but I don't, I've been, I have not been a part of a book club done well. Um, mm-hmm. And I haven't been a part of very many in real life book clubs anyway. Really? Um, my ideal book club would be everybody read their book that they want to read and then come and yes. talk about why they love it and like everybody else can be like oh I want to read that oh, I want to read Which that. Is booktube. that's booktube yeah that's what booktube is that, that, yeah that's what it is yeah I agree and like for I like book clubs but like I I can do maybe one a month you know yeah. like having the book sisters means like I'm not really participating in any others mm-hmm. because I yeah other it becomes well and because there. and because I read my priority re- reason yeah. for reading is for entertainment yeah. and enjoyment and yeah. I don't want to have to be thinking about what, what kind to of discuss and yes. I'm just yes. I'm I'm not a critical reader yeah. I can be at times when I need to be but I just don't prefer to read that way yeah I feel like when I have when I know I'm going to have to discuss something mm-hmm. I read differently than if I'm yeah. just sitting back enjoying it me. yep yep yeah. uh coffee or tea tea cocoa hot cider cocoa okay do you drink hot stuff all year? Uh, not so much in the summer. In Virginia, yeah. it gets pretty hot, so yeah. I don't I don't drink hot stuff yeah. in the summertime. But spring, fall, and winter for sure. What is your favorite snack? Oh, right now, white cheddar popcorn. Mm. <laughs> I love smart food that like yep. black bag. With <laughs> yep. Uh, but I'm not allowed to buy it because I'll eat the whole bag. <laughs> popcorn is like the best, but the worst. The yeah. And like, especially um, those tins that you get at Christmas that have the three different flavors, like, because anytime there's multiple flavors and or a sweet and salty combo, it's very easy to just continue and continue. I may have bought myself one of those this year. <laughs> just one is fine. <laughs> and it was like a shorter one. It wasn't one of the real. Okay. Things. Okay. Um, yeah. Right now I'm doing Whole30 this month. Oh, yeah, yeah. So another favorite snack is apples with almond butter. Ooh, that's um, delicious. That's like when I want yeah. something sweet, I'll have apples with almond butter. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But, yeah. It's, it's good. <laughs> good, good. Well, that's everything I've got. Thank you so much for doing this again. You're so welcome. I love this series that you do. It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so fun. Watch. It is so, I love it too. Even if nobody watches, this is, I love it. So Lots of people are watching. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you. you and too. we'll chat later about everybody always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. bye.